You are going to love this episode. So many people have been asking me, how do you organize your Canva? What can I do to get my Canva more organized? Well, I kind of had the same problem. I have Dina Rutter on the podcast today. It's an interesting episode recording it because we were both looking at our computers and we had to pause a lot. So I've edited it down to make it as easy to listen to as possible. But we've also made videos to go along with it. So kind of tutorial videos showing you our screens to help you see what we're doing. Those videos are linked in the show notes. You'll want to watch them after you listen to the episode and then get on your Canva account and get these basic things set up. The other thing that you need to know, if you want to get your home and life organized in 2024, the doors are open to Organized Life Academy. If you don't know that I do that, but you probably do because I've been talking about it a little bit on the podcast. Organized Life Academy is a program that I do each year. This will be the fourth year, 2024, and the doors are open right now and it's gonna be so exciting. You're gonna transform your mindset around organizing. You're gonna grow your skills. You're gonna be given exactly what to do so that you know what to do each month. And we're gonna declutter, we're gonna have expert guests, we have quarterly projects. You will have transformation. So get in there, the link is in the show notes. It's simplysquaredaway.com forward slash 2024. That program, Organized Life Academy and Organized Coach Academy are my two programs that I help people get organized in. And Organized Coach Academy, if you're wondering, when is she going to open the doors to that? That will be coming in December and we'll start in January. So there is a wait list for that. If you want to get on the wait list, you'll get access to a special bonus when the doors open. So you can get on that. It's also in the show notes. Okay, let's go. Let's find out how to organize our Canva account. Are you ready to work less, feel more organized and productive, streamline repetitive tasks, and implement systems that allow your coaching business to run smoothly even without you? If so, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Organized Coach Podcast, your go-to source for practical tips and solutions. I'm your host, Tracy Hoth, professional organizer, certified life coach, simplifying expert, and most of all, down-to-earth fellow coach just like you. No matter if you think you're missing the organizing gene, have ADHD, or just love anything organizing, I'm here to help you become an organized coach with a business that works for you. Pull up a seat and let's get started. I have been waiting for this episode <laughs> since I started this podcast. I think it was my idea to have Dina on to do this podcast a long time ago, even before I had one, but how to organize your Canva account. And I went to the expert, Dina Rutter, and she's on the podcast today. So welcome, Dina. I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you, Tracy. I'm so excited to be here too. Can you just tell us what you do? Like, why are you yes. the expert? How do I know that? Yes. Okay. So I am the brand designer for life coaches. I'm a certified life coach as well. And a lot like you, like we get into this life coaching space and then we start to see like our individual gifts that we have and ways that we can help like bring life coaching to so many more people. So that's what I figured out is I love the coaching world. I love coaching. I love the mindset tools that I have for myself and how it's helped me like scale my business. But I also saw so many life coaches getting stuck with the design part of their business. And I've been a graphic designer for a couple decades. And I am helping other life coaches to brand their businesses, to streamline the design work in their business, help them get set up. And so that they can just focus on what they really love doing, which is coaching. We all know, like, we don't want to be doing the thing that like feels like drudgery to us. We want to be doing that thing that lights us up. And most life coaches don't love the designing part they get a little overwhelmed when they get in there. So I love to help them to look amazing online, be able to manage it on their own with a little bit of help from me um, or with their VA, whatever they decide to do. So that's what yeah. I love doing. Yes. Yeah. And all your stuff is beautiful. Sometimes you, you just wish you had other people's gifts. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do like looking at everything that you do. 
what my biggest complaint kind of was, was that when you open Canva, it seems messy. Like I feel overwhelmed and I, it's just like yes. stuff everywhere. So thoughts, do you feel like that? Yes, I really, I do feel like that. I've tried to organize everything, but you still open up Canva. You've got the blue box that says, what are you going to design today? They give you this nice search bar. They give you all of these other ideas, docs and whiteboards and Instagram stories. And you're like, wait, I came in here for something else. I've just figured out you have to just kind of step through that little room into your room of designs that I'm going to help you get set up and get organized. Here's the homepage. You've got your homepage. If you can imagine this, if you're um, just listening, um, but then we've got like projects and where I go all the time and what I help people to streamline is their projects and their brand kit. Getting those two things set up will really keep you more organized. Is there anything on the homepage that you would change to make it less? Oh yeah. Okay. So the top part that you see the most is really what Canva wants you to see. Mm -hmm. um, Cause they want you to have a lot of success in there and have a lot of ideas and know that they're capable of so much. But when we get in there, we want to not be overwhelmed. We want to just focus. And like, we've had a timer set and we're like, we're going to get this design done in this amount of time. So scroll down to maybe your recent designs or what you have there, but how Tracy has it set up right now. And I'm going to suggest to it a different way is Tracy has it. So it's like a line item. So she has list it like view. horizontal mm -hmm. yeah, list view. And I want her to switch it to grid view. And those are the four dots on the right-hand corner. So if I click, yes. it already makes it so much better. Right. So you can see visually a lot more um, what you have going on here. Get it into grid view so you can see everything you have. Okay. When you have your projects, um, you can see what folders they're put in just in this project. I can see like Tracy has some of them organized in a folder, some of them not. And we're going to talk more about that too. Okay. And that is the, is that right here? This gray yes. under, under the picture of your design, there's a mm -hmm. little gray box and some yes. of them I can see some of them are yes. in folders. <laughs> and if you clicked on that, like where it says podcast graphics, it's going to take you to that folder. Okay. See so just that little tip. I would not yeah. even have known that. And this is what I want everyone to know. I am an organizer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am organized. But I avoid organizing Canva because it seems completely overwhelmed. So you're just like me. I'm just like everyone else. And that's why I get someone to help me. Yeah. And I would say I still get, there's times when I use Canva where I'm searching for something that I know, like I named it. Yeah. I know it has this in the name and I still can't find it. So really putting it into a folder right when you create it. And we're going to talk about that in a second too. Okay, it's going so, to make it so much easier to find everything. Yeah. So what's the next thing? Anything else on the homepage? We That's, clicked off the homepage and went into mm -hmm. projects. Yes. Okay. Yes. And we switched it into grid view. So. That's nice. It switches to grid view on your whole account. Everywhere. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Okay. So once we're in our projects. Let's talk about what we, let's pretend like we're creating something. Purple box on the top, right? Create a design. Yes. Let's say you went in and you're like, I really want to create an, yeah, an Instagram post. Let's just do that. Okay. So maybe you've done some other Instagram posts, but you're creating like a new template for yourself. This is going to be your podcast guests and you're going to keep them all in the same document. You're naming it after your podcast it says podcast guest. That's perfect for now. Okay. Um, and if you have a team that you work with, Mm -hmm. You need to go um, and share it with, so your whole team can see. So click on that plus sign <laughs> and you need to change where it has the hidden eye. You need to change that. If you have a VA, you always want them to see. Huh. If you have like a team member, like let's say you have a VA member um, that isn't in like your actual account with you, but, but you've added them to your team. You want them to be able to go and like make copies of this and create more in it. You need to go change that. So that is like always a first step. Because okay. that is really frustrating. That's a frustrating point when you are like 
sharing a link with someone and they can't find it. And it's because you just haven't turned the eyeball on. So we turn on the eyeball. The next thing we're going to do, so we named it then we shared it. And now we're going to put it in the folder right away. So the way you do that is you go up to file over on the left, click on file, and then you're going to scroll down to where it says save a folder, save to folder. And then if you don't already have a folder created, mm. you can create a new one. Okay. So this is where you would want to like capture, maybe these are all of your podcast social media images or something like that in this folder. Let's do the organized coach podcast main folder. Perfect. Okay. So then you're going to say add to new folder. So now that's already tagged and ready for you. So now you create your design that takes, once you get this, that took 15 seconds. It would like, once you repeat this and you get good at it, 15 seconds, that's going to save you hours and like so much frustration. Okay. So I'm reviewing yes. everyone yes. needs to do this from now on name it immediately. Cause what I do is just start making it and then I download mm -hmm. it and I'm like, Oh, it doesn't even have a name. Mm -hmm. So name yeah. it. And then right next to it, there's a plus sign and you're going to allow it to be viewed. If it's just someone viewing, like, let's say you created a PDF for a client, but you just want them to be able to read it, but you don't want them to be able to make any changes then you. So Just there's those two options can edit or can yeah. view, and then you're going to yeah. go over to file and you're going to save to folder. If you did that every time you're a Canva genius because <laughs> you're just going to feel so much better every time you go to Canva, honestly, that's going to be our challenge to everyone to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we have a system in place of naming. When you do this podcast guest template yes. that you create, you're going to just copy and paste, rinse and repeat. So like, you're gonna put my picture in there this week, but then next week you're gonna copy it and add the next guest in there. So yes. all in the same document. And then I you learned, can just export the one you need. Yes, I learned that from you because if you guys aren't on Dina's mailing list, you need to get on there yes. and follow her on YouTube because I learn so much when she sends videos out each week. <laughs> I watch them and yeah. then I do the little steps. So I learned that duplicate the page. It's right at the top right corner and keep them all in here instead of making it. Cause I think I might've went up to file and like copy design or make a copy instead of duplicating it within yeah. the graphic. There's a place for both of those, but I would say if you're doing the same graphic, don't start a new one. It's so easy to just duplicate. And then do you edit yeah. the one on the top to keep the most yes. one at the top? Go down to the bottom where you see the little grid system. Mm -hmm. If we had more than one, then all of them show <gasps> at once and you can reorder them. Oh my goodness. So I could drag this one. Well, I'd have to plus. And then yeah. I could drag. So then you can over. drag them. This is a great way. I suggest this for um, curating your Instagram feeds. Oh, so you can just kind of move things around. Yeah. Okay. This is so exciting. I know you guys are just <laughs> listening to this, but <laughs> I know, I you, feel need bad. To, you need yeah. to go in and look at this. Okay. This is what we'll recreate. Thing. We're going to create them a video for this. Yeah, like I'm writing more... down all these ideas like, Ooh, yeah. More, yeah, more structured and just whichever mm -hmm. one I'm like, Oh, you know, make sure you cover that. Mm -hmm. Cause it's so exciting. Yeah. It okay. makes me want to go sit down for a couple hours, but I don't have time to do that today. Yeah. So. Yes. I'll have to come back to it. Yeah. Okay. What's the next thing? Okay. So we've got it organized. Um, we put it in a folder. Mm -hmm. If when you click on projects, you can see your designs that you've been working on. You can go to your folders. You can see things that you've been working on recently. You can see the images that you've recently uploaded all over there. Okay. So the next thing we're looking at is we're going to our folders and we're hovering over or clicking on the three dots on the right side of the folder in order to do what? I want you to star the folders that you're using all the time. So if we were going mm. to get really organized with our Canva, we'd be like, okay, I've got my social media folder. I've got my funnel folder. I've got my course folder. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to start all those folders and we're going to put them. So then they end up on this left bar where we can see them all the time. Ooh. Okay. So for me, it would definitely be podcast mm -hmm. folder. Each course mm -hmm. would have a folder. I would do templates 
because okay, I yes. bought or downloaded lots of free templates. Yes. And then they're going to live on that left-hand bar. And when you click on them, once you get really organized within that social media folder, you're going to have Instagram, the podcast guests, and then you're going to have Instagram quotes from the podcast. And then those different folders are going to be in there or the different templates or the different designs that you have created. But oh. see how you start that TOC podcast main folder and it's there now. Okay. Now we kind of know, you know, what to do when we start making it to keep it organized. When we make something, we do those three things. We know how to start an item. So it stays on our homepage on the left bar. Mm -hmm. But then what about our whole thing is a mess? How do you suggest getting it organized? Like we make okay. some main folders and then mm -hmm. what? make some main folders. And then you can start taking the designs that you've already created on the left-hand side. It says your project. See all of your designs oh, right there. You okay. can say show more. So let's say I see some of your course images, find one of your course images and if you go up into the left-hand corner, there's a little box where you can check oh, it. So oh. ch check a, a couple of those. Okay. And then as soon as you check one, there's a little folder that pulls up at the bottom. You can also drag and select these. I just made that change, but go to move to folder, and then you can move it into your the folder that you want. And you can also create your folder right here too. So then you would move those there. And, and like you said about like starting at the top down. So you're going to be like, okay, I need to make a folder for all of my course stuff. And you're going to go through and you're going to find all of your um, TOCA, the Academy. You're going to find all of that. You're going to put that in a big folder. And then if you need to do subfolders, just kind of keep thinking. It's a lot about probably how you teach to organize everything on your computer and all of your digital assets. It's the same way you you start putting that into subfolders and then however you need to do that, then you star that main folder. So it's right there when you're ready to work on it. And then you can kind of see the subfolders that are available for you. I just love that. It's the first step of organizing is to sort. And it's exactly okay. what I teach with our yes. digital file. So make your main folders and then go to your designs, see all mm -hmm. and start checking the box on the left side of every image. And that goes into a particular folder and move mm -hmm. it to that folder and keep doing that until all your designs are gone. And maybe some of them don't fit in, then make a miscellaneous folder. I guess you could see if you could delete them mm -hmm. and then star the folders and they'll show up. Okay. I think yes. that's like all I need to know yes. that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go That's into Canva. right there. Yeah. So excited now. Yes. I have a system to maintain it. I have folders that show up on the left side and mm -hmm. all of my designs are in a folder. Yes. That's Love great. it. Do that Canva genius. Like honestly. Yeah. Yes. And I think like that you could set a timer and say, okay, I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it for 15 minutes and see how many things you can get organized in that 15 minutes would yeah, we'd be surprised how far you could get. It's probably like the, I don't even want to start this thing mm -hmm. that's happening and they are wasting 15 minutes dreading it when you could just get just a lot do done. It. Just mm -hmm. get some sorting yeah. done. I tell people yeah. that all the time. Yeah. Okay. One thing you are expert at that I want to talk to you about while you're here is mm -hmm. the brand folder. So everyone okay. has a brand folder. Mm -hmm. What is so, it that you would suggest there. Yes. So if you have the free brand, free Canva account, you can only add two colors to your brand kit, two or three, and you can't add custom fonts and things like that. So, um, you, you can only do what you can do. So I would suggest if you don't have Canva pro to just add like the two colors that you use all the time. Okay. Um, and I also have a video that shows you like a Canva hack that if you don't have Canva Pro, there's a document that you can create that has all of your fonts on it and all of your colors on it. So you can just bring that in and use that every time you create something. Um, but if you do have Canva Pro, you can add as many colors as you want, but I do suggest like keeping it streamlined. Um, what you have here, Tracy, is really pretty. I like that Tracy's got like a few like main colors and then she's got sort of like softer versions 
of yeah. her main brand colors and then like some neutrals. You're, I'm always surprised like how many neutrals you have, uh, how many neutrals you need to add like mm -hmm. a little bit of depth to your design. Like a lot of people just want to stick with like those really bright saturated colors, but they, it kind of gets monotonous in our feeds when we don't have these different versions. So I love what you're, you've done. Well, here. and I do this and have this because of your video. Aww, I went and watched your yay. video and added all these, the muted colors. Good. So everyone and that video needs was probably to... like three minutes long. I keep my videos so short and yes. So we'll link to, to that video possible. for yeah. sure. We'll link to okay. a lot of your videos that cover Perfect. these things already. Mm -hmm. So we're not making duplicate videos yes. of stuff, but mm -hmm. I, I do I did love that. And I went immediately mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. So in the brand hub, you can add your logos, your colors, your fonts that you use, keep your fonts to two to three. Um, if you do have a script font, make sure it's very readable. A lot of people love using script fonts, but then you can't read what it says when you mm -hmm. type in the script. So just keep that in mind. And then you can add like photos of yourself into your brand hub. You can add like any graphics that you use. Yeah. So like put your photos in there that you use all the time for your branding because it, then it stays over there on the left-hand side. Every time you click, click on brand, all of this pops up and you're just can pop it in rather than having to go into your, even though it's an organized photo folder that you have them in. It's so nice to have it. You can have it in multiple places, but I always suggest like keeping it in your brand kit. It's so, all right there. Yeah. So we're looking at my brand kit right now mm -hmm. and there's no photos. And I know I have a ton of photos in here. Yes. So add those. That's going to be mm -hmm. so nice because I'm often yeah. looking and especially I have little favicons, you know, little mm -hmm. icons and I need yes. to, to add them in here. Yes. Ugh. Anything you're using a lot for like your brand, having it there is game game changer. Okay. One of the things that you said was your best Canva time hack. Is my brand, is having your brand kit set up. It is the first thing I tell anybody to do. I really think the pro version of Canva is worth the money. You can really do so much in Canva now. There's all the stock photos, almost everything you could need is right there. You can edit videos in there. You can post right to social media from there. Um, you can resize all of, you can take an Instagram post, square Instagram post and resize it to a story size. If you have the Canva Pro version, like I said, I've been a designer for years and I've used Adobe products like Illustrator and Photoshop. I was a little hesitant to move over to Canva probably just being a design snob or something, but Cam now Adobe is trying to keep up with Canva and Canva makes it so user-friendly that now I love setting things up for my clients in Canva because I know it's something that they can reproduce and use on their own. And I will tell you, like I pay triple what I pay for Adobe products for what mm -hmm. Canva costs for one that it's all in one. So, well, and you almost need it because everybody that sends sells templates or gives you free, you know, mm -hmm. little templates that you download, mm -hmm. it's all editable in Canva. So you almost yeah. need, it's so worth it and pay for the year. Yes. So you don't think about it each month. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's your advice if someone's stuck? Oh, someone is stuck having something that is like a style guide, like what you're putting in your kit to stay like focused on these are the colors I use these are the fonts I use so you don't have to go so far out trying to find new things I think if people are stuck it's usually because like they're they don't know if it looks good they're afraid to post because they don't know if it looks like amateur to amateur um, so that's kind of stick keeping them stuck is just thinking it doesn't look good enough. Just remember like Canva has so many templates. I have lots of templates. I have a, um, something called the life coaches brand in a box where you can have all of this ready to go for you in your Canva account where, um, and I can link to that too. So you can learn more about that, but just starting with like a base template and then just adding in your own content. I know it's a little scary and I know sometimes it gets overwhelming um, but just like keep moving forward and know that like the more you do this, the more, the better you're going to get at it. But I do suggest like setting a timer and saying, no matter what, like this post is going to be good enough at the yes. end of these few minutes or whatever you decide. Yeah. Well, so. tell us about brand in a box. What, what does yes. that include? So I've worked with hundreds 
of life coaches setting up their brands, like custom setting up their brands. And I realized like all these coaches need the same kind of templates. They all need social media. They all need a freebie. They all need a webinar template. They need a simple logo and they need their colors and their fonts. So I created curated templates that I've created that you can purchase all of those templates. Plus you get me to, we have a monthly call. Like I have one this afternoon where you can come on there and I help you with any design that you're working on. And I can help you create it and make it a little bit better. So it's all done for you. So you can have your brand done. So you can stop thinking about all of that. You can have it all in one place. You can have it in Canva. um, So you can really just keep working on your business and you're going to look amazing from the beginning or wherever you are in your business when you have um, all of these templates in place. So then your LinkedIn matches your Facebook, matches your Instagram templates. I think that having all of that consistency creates connection with the people that you're trying to attract um, and you want to work with you, like it creates, you know, some trust and Mm -hmm. like that, like no trust that when they can kind of know what to expect when they see a post by you or when they go to your website or when they go to your social media accounts, it all looks really cohesive and professional. Well, and to have your eyes on it. I don't think I realized the calls because yeah, that's a skill. I mean, I do think you're gifted with design (laughs) for sure, Mm -hmm. but it's also a skill that you can practice. And so having that practice with you would be amazing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Anything else you want to share? I would say anything that we practice, we get better at, but also like put some parameters around how much practice um, you spend on it. So it doesn't get overwhelming or you don't spend so much time in Canva that you're not working on finding new clients, keep moving forward, keep cheering yourself on, and you're going to just keep improving and you're going to learn so much about yourself. And um, it's really going to give you a chance to really shine. And the only way that people find out about you really is if you're out there showing up and being consistent about that. And most of that comes with a little bit of design somewhere within those reach out. So practice, not perfection. Yes, for sure. (laughs) That is for sure. Yep. Everybody go follow Dina, get on her email list and get brand in a box for sure. Yes. So yes. thank you so much for being here. Thanks, so we are going to create summary video based mm-hmm. on what we talked about in here so that you can actually sit at your computer, get into your own Canva and get these things set up until next week. Thanks, we'll Tracy. Then. Wait, if you're finding this podcast useful, you must check out the Organized Coach Academy. It's my course where I walk you through every step to get your business organized, to get yourself organized, to save money and time, to prepare to hire someone, to do all the things that you want to do in your business with ease. Check that out at simplysquaredaway.com forward slash OCA. Also, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but... I would love it. It's my way of knowing that you're enjoying the podcast if you leave a written review. I have lots of freebies for you. They're linked in the show notes. You can find them in my bio on Instagram at Tracy Hoth. And until next week, have a beautiful day.